Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Show Me How It's Done. My name is Laura Nervonis and I am a Stamping Up Canadian demonstrator. I am so excited to welcome you to my weekly edition of Show Me How It's Done, where I show you a fun little technique or one of the products from our Stamping Up selections. And this week we're going to do both. So I have a really fun technique using the new Stamping Up masking paper that I'd like to share with you in combination with this Christmas barn bundle. Now I absolutely love this bundle. It kind of screams Canadian Christmas. So sorry, snow, snowy white Christmas girl here. We're going to play with this stamp set and use a bunch of the different coordinating pieces as well as some of the dies that go along with it on today's projects. But as you can see, there are some really fun ones that we're not using, such as this little fence up here, this little light post or a uh, little sign, it's so cute. And then some of these snowflakes that can actually cut out some of your backgrounds. Now I do wanna highlight a couple pieces that we're not using today, but I want to show you what they're for. So this guy, for instance, goes around this sentiment and there is another one for the Merry Christmas to you and yours. Those ones are not self-explanatory when you see them and you're kind of probably a little stumped when you first open this selection. So I wanted to highlight that for you so that you can use it in the future. And maybe this little fun pond we'll have to play with on another project. But let's get going. So I am going to give you all the measurements as we go along for the cards, just in case you wanna follow along with me. If you're somebody who just wants to watch this through, then I do also list the measurements and the supplies in the comments or the description, I guess, on the video. So you can always come back and craft along with me later. So what we're going to start with is a card base. And I have chosen to use shaded spruce for my card base. It's very light in here today for some reason. You know, getting chilly, but we still have light, so that's great. Okay, so shaded spruce. This guy is going to be five and a half by eight and a half and we're putting a score mark down the middle at four and one quarter that's going to fold our card in half for us and then from there we're going to add a few other pieces that uh, that we need to make our card come to life so the first piece that you need is some copper foil so you're going to look at this piece and wonder what on earth did you just do? Well, I use this card as part of my Christmas barn specialty class, and I will show you guys the other two projects at the very end that we did at the class as well, and give you a chance um, to maybe get your hands on them. I'll tell you about that later. But anyways, so what I did was I started with a piece of copper foil that measured four inches by five and a quarter, and then I used my stitched rectangles to punch out other pieces that I needed for future projects. So you can do that if you'd like to save part of this foil because we're just covering it up with this piece of ivory and foil paper can get expensive. So I like to make mine go as far as possible. If you don't care or you don't want to uh, be bothered by that, just cut your foil at four by five and a quarter. This guy, I'm going to put right on my card base with double-sided tape. So you can use seal or you can use glue, whatever you're most comfortable with. But I'm just gonna put this flat on the card. If you really wanted to, you could probably pop this layer up too. But I kind of wanted my dimension to come from the wreath and the little sleigh. But it will still fit in an envelope and be able to mail if you decide you want a little bit more dimension to your project. Okay, so here we go. There is my little frame of copper. Now on top of that, we will be putting a piece of vanilla. However, we need to do some stamping on it before it gets attached to the card. But now would be a great time to go ahead still and cut the piece that you need. So this one is going to be three and three quarters by five. And that, if you can just double check, fits straight on top. But don't attach it right now because we need to stamp on it first. Then on the inside of your card, I always like to offer you guys something to write on. So this is another piece of very vanilla cut at four by five and a quarter. That's going straight on the inside here. 
and you can add some details, maybe like some spruce trees or something later, but that's easy to add at the very end. So we're just gonna put this on the inside and kind of forget about it for a minute. Because we have a lot of work to do on the outside of our card. Whoops, throwing things here. There we go. Oh, hi, I see a couple of you popping on as you're watching. Hello, ladies, thanks for joining. Please make sure to comment and say where you're from. You guys can also chat in the comments too. I know sometimes my feed is a little slow. I don't always see it at the same time that you're commenting. So if you ask something or say something, I may get back to you later. So uh, that's okay. But anyways, here's our card base. We're gonna put this guy aside for now and do a little bit of work with stamping. Okay, so I like to stamp on a scrap. This is just my lovely little uh, chipboard because it kind of fits in the screen for you. So we're going to do a little bit of stamping on that smaller piece of vanilla. The first color that you're going to need to grab is a crumb cake ink pad. And if you don't own crumb cake, you could use soft suede um, or it's just something gentle and subtle for your barn here. Okay, so crumb cake ink pad, open that up and get ready to do a little bit of stamping. I have mounted my barn on a large block and I'm just gonna ink it up very well, okay? So the barn can kind of play tricks with your eyes. Make sure you're not lining your snow up nice and straight because then the barn will be crooked. So let's pretend, look, if I want my snow straight, the barn's kind of crooked. So tilt that a bit so your barn is straight on the card and we're going with the upper right hand corner here so it doesn't have to be right snug in that corner but towards the top of the right is where we're going to put this barn okay press it down nice and evenly so you've got a nice crisp look now because you guys have your crumb cake out i should have mentioned you also need a scrap of vanilla for you to stamp a little set of your sleigh pieces so you can go ahead and do that right now because you have the crumb cake out and then put this aside and run it through your cut and emboss machine later i did it already just because i wanted to save you guys a little bit of watching time so this is a piece that you can do at the very end and add on to the card it's not involved in the process here okay so that crumb cake ink is done now we're going to add some trees and I'm going to use the same color ink as I did with my cardstock. So that is my shaded spruce. However, let's just pretend I started stamping trees on this project. How on earth did I get this little tree without cutting this barn out to hide behind the barn and not go on top of it? So that's where the stamping up masking paper comes in. This is a sticky paper, kind of imagine a post-it in like full sheet form that you can cut out with your dies. So I used the solid barn die and I cut this out of the masking paper. And now it turns into kind of a sticker or a post-it as you will, that I can put over top of my barn and it's gonna protect it from all the stamping that I'm doing on top. So make sure you've lined that up quite nicely so every part of your image is covered. But because it's not a really harsh adhesive, when I want to pull this off at the end, it's not, hopefully, <laughs> going to pull any of my paper off with it. It's just there to cover up the barn so I don't get any tree images on it, okay? So, shaded spruce ink. We're going to start stamping some trees. And I'm just gonna start kind of from right to left here with some trees. So you can see I put the whole tree on, but when I pull that tape off, whatever's over top of this barn isn't going to show up. Same with the second tree that's going kind of over the top of the barn. The barn is still going to be protected, so it gave it gives you kind of a two-dimensional look or even three-dimensional i guess without actually having to use the dies and popping your barn up so it's a really really fun way to get that two 
two-dimensional look here. Okay, so I'm adding that guy. And then you can add your trees wherever you'd like, really. Just kind of give a nice little cluster around your barn so that it covers some of the space. I'm even going to put a few branches right over there. Okay, so you can always come back later if you needed to and add something else, but I thought that was a good amount of trees. It didn't kind of take over my project. Now, while your green is out, if you're thinking, hey, I'd like to decorate the inside of my card, this would maybe be a great time to just add a couple trees in there as well. And because we're doing the same color as the card base, it doesn't matter that we're doing this while this, it's attached. Okay, so just a couple trees kind of brightens up your card a bit. And then you're done with the shaded spruce ink. And you can move this again. Okay, let's take a peek at this guy. So as you peel this off, you'll see there's your barn. No trees on it. And it looks like it's just nestled in the woods. Now you can actually save these. I just kind of stick them onto the back of my case like this. I wanted to do a fresh one to show you it. But I just stick them on my case and then I can use them actually quite a few more times for different projects. So I can do a whole pile of these cards and use that same cutout of the barn that I originally had. Okay, now time for a sentiment. We're going to add that first because whatever you choose, you're gonna to have to work around it for the other pieces that you want to add to the project. So I've decided I wanted the Merry Christmas to you and yours. Um, you might decide that you want this really skinny, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Keep in mind, you still wanna have room for the sleigh over here. So it might not be the best choice, but you can still do it if you move your sleigh up and then it wouldn't be side by side. You'd have your sentiment along the bottom and your sleigh kind of above it. So just keep those in mind. I decided to go with the Mary Merlot ink for my sentiment here. And I'm just going to grab, where did it go? There we go. Merry Christmas to you and yours. And I'm putting this as far to the bottom right as I can. There we go. Nice crisp sentiment. Now the details, 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 so much fun. Okay, I thought this little fence was adorable, so I had to use it. I'm going to use soft suede. You can also use an early espresso, so a nice brown fence of some sort. And we're just going to tap that in there. And the reason we did the sentiment first is the fence is going to go right on top of it, but we could have moved our fence up a little bit if we had to here. Oh, not enough ink. I hit a dry spot. There we go. So once I've lined up the one side here on the right to the edge, the other parts will just be perfect and I can go from there. Okay, so there's my little fence line. I thought it was great just putting it on one side. You could put it on the other two, um, but then you'd have to play with the dimension and the layout. And I kind of figured with the sleigh there, it wasn't necessary. And then there's this really, really adorable set, uh, stamp that I have to show you. This little pathway here, it kind of looks like footprints. So I thought, hey, we have to use that and uh, kind of add that to our project. So you can make it whichever way you want. They kind of have theirs facing the least amount to the greatest, but I figured at the top of a barn, you'd probably have more footprints simply because you have to walk around a little bit more. So I'm gonna use the crumb cake, the same color as I did for the barn. And I'm actually going to put the greatest amount of footprints up by my barn door. And then they kind of taper downwards, but doesn't matter. Whichever way you place them, it's great. It'll be fine. And then again, because we're putting the sleigh here, you don't need to fill in that empty space. That's just empty stamping that you don't really need to do. Okay, so now would be a great time for you to attach this piece to your card base. We're going to do that with flat adhesive. And I like my double-sided tape, but of course you guys use whatever works for you. 
and we're going to put this on top of that copper foil and then add a few final pieces to the project. Okay, make sure your card's opening the right way before you put this down, you put all this work into it. It's hard to have to rip it up. There we go. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that I have already stamped my little sleigh in crumb cake, and I've cut that out using the coordinating die. So I decided for this card, I'm not going to color it. I wanted this card to be as easy as possible for myself with the elegance of the stamp kind of speaking for me. So I didn't have to sit here and color the barn on this one. I didn't have to color the sleigh. I'm going to show you a couple projects later that do add those different techniques with something done to the barn and something done to the sleigh. But for this one, I'm just stamped and I'm using the imagery just as it is. The nice subtle color. Okay, so there's my sleigh in the bottom left here. And now if I decided, if you decided that this was a Christmas card like I did, I thought it was really cute to use the little wreath stamp. So I stamped on a scrap of ivory in the same shaded spruce color that we did the trees. And then to do this bow, we're actually just going to color using one of our red markers. So you can either use a stamp and blend and you'll want to make sure to use the side that's really skinny. Or if you want to get even de more detailed, you can use a stamp and write marker. And either one is fine. Use your real red color for this combination. And you're just going to nice and quickly go through and color that bow. The green will kind of stand out, which is good because it gives you the shape of the bow still. It doesn't turn it into like a red blob, but you can color over it too. I find it easier than adding green later instead. So you can really only stamp in one color easily with this one. So the blends would be a little quicker because they tend to kind of bleed into your paper quite nicely, but I liked the really fine tip on this one. This is actually the writing tip that you'd use. It's about the size of a pen. So it's really easy to use. I'm going to flip that over and put dimensionals on the back of it. Just a couple of them is necessary. And I'm going to then put this in the top of my barn, kind of by the loft area like so. So there's my Christmas barn. So I have a couple techniques that I want to show you that you can add to this. You don't have to by any means, but if you have these products handy, you will see the difference. So on this card, if I hold it up, you're going to see a little bit of shimmer, hopefully, not just from the outsides, but there we go. See a little bit of shimmer right down here and kind of across the snowy plain. This one is very plain. It doesn't have that same look, even though it's not focusing. There you go. It doesn't have that same look. So what I'm going to do is take my Wink of Stella and I'm just going to scribble a little bit in this snowy space. Okay, you can go over some of the other parts that you've stamped, but it just adds the slightest glimmer of snow. Okay, and when you're up close and kind of flipping it around, you will see the difference. And then one other thing is we all love embellishments. So you can either use our pearl rhinestones or embellishments, or we have this really cool set of pearlized enamel effects. So they come in a set of three. There's silver, red, and white. And this red one is really great for berries and such. And the silver is great for like ornaments on a tree. But the white is really fun for like a snowfall look. So all you need to do is add the tiniest little dot. And when they dry, they look like a pearlized enamel dot. Okay, so you can add as many or as few as you want. But I thought even two just kind of added to my project here on the left. 
and made the sky just kind of feel a little bit more tied together. So keep in mind, you need to let this dry. You can't just slap something on top of it right now. I would actually put this aside probably for about an hour or so just to let those sit and set. But uh, you can see they really do make a beautiful project. Yeah, so this was project number three I mentioned at a specialty class that I did, um, I guess in September on the Christmas Barn Suite. And I actually have a few sets left. So if you're in Canada, I can actually mail you a kit. You'd get to make this card. You'd get to make these other two cards. And uh, the class is, it's free with a $60 order. So I do suggest you buy the Christmas Barn <laughs> bundle with that because you'll need it for the projects. But if you own it already and don't need anything else, you can also just pay $25 and um, I also send you a video tutorial on how to do the projects. So here's the other two. And there's also a free gift in there. Um, so I won't spoil the surprise, but I have, I think about three packets left. So if you're in Canada and uh, it's, you know, close to the time I've done this video, just message me and I can always get that to you. So here was card number two that we did. Some really nice coloring with, uh, with navy in the background there. And I did color my sleigh using some blends here. And then here was card number three. So I tried to kind of tie these three together with that copper. And I started with that initial copper sheet. I cut out this one, then I cut out this one, then I cut out this one. So we really made use of just one copper rectangle in this. So sorry, it's really hard to kind of keep all of them in your screen. But there you go. There's a little peek of my Christmas barn class. And if you're not in Canada or you don't want to buy it, feel free to take a picture and enjoy these cards as they are. But they don't come with the measurements on this video. That would be on the other one. So I am so happy you joined me. Please come back next Tuesday. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me, um, you know, see that you guys are interested and it helps me to, um, to see what you're liking and maybe what I could do more of for you. So make comments, tell me what you'd enjoy to see in the future. Um, but stay tuned because I have lots more fun stuff coming for you, especially this holiday season. And then of course, into the new year is always great because it will be another round of celebration. But I will see you guys next Tuesday, and I hope you go back and watch some of the other videos to see what I've been up to as well. Bye.